part of the service, I have a few announcements of importance to our community. So the Friends of Wake Guardian Ad Litem, or GAL, sponsor a variety of projects throughout the year. So you probably remember, if you've been around for a few years, how we've partnered with them in the past, um, providing backpacks for kids going back to school. However, uh, as you know, going back to school is a little bit more complicated this year. And the needs are greater than ever. So requests for backpacks from the Wake County Human Services has doubled. And we've got all these logistical challenges in doing a traditional uh, back-to-school supply drive. Well, and with the uncertainty of the un reopening plan for the Wake County School, because now they're all virtual or a combination of virtual and in-person, the Friends have had a high number of requests for iPads and laptops, as well as for Texas Instruments TI 84 plus CE graphing calculators. They also have a computer for kids program in partnership with the Cramden Institute to provide school age children, foster kinship care and other at risk children with a computer, printer, flash drive and software. So here are a few ways that you can help. You can consider making an online PayPal donation on our website. You can mail a check payable to TCSL, but please write in the memo part, guardian ad litem, and you send that to the Triangle Center for Spiritual Living, 4000 Bearcat Way, Suite 104, Morrisville, North Carolina, 27560. Or you could donate a computer, iPad, or graphing calculator, new or gently used, by contacting Susan Krupa at 919-601-9607. All right. Have you found yourself missing the community and wanting more opportunities to come together? I know I have. So we have a new program called Let's Stay Connected. Let's Stay Connected is an opportunity to come together immediately after the service each Sunday on Zoom. It will be an opportunity to talk about the message or to simply check in with each other. If you're watching the service on Zoom, just stay where you are. If you're watching on Facebook Live, you'll have to jump over to our Zoom channel right after the service. Let's stay connected. Our monthly lunch bunch on the first Sunday of the month will be on hiatus until we come back together in person. Let's stay connected will take its place each and every Sunday. Are you ready to embark on the adventure of spiritual education to transform the quality of your life? Spiritual education is one of the many ways that we grow spiritually. Classes go way beyond the Sunday morning experience by providing a consistent, ongoing environment for the student to self-reflect, self-study, and expand their scope of spiritual experience and knowledge. Participating in classes and workshops fosters community and soul companions in a way that few activities can. And so we have two classes that will be offered this fall. The first is our foundations class. The foundation class is a 10-week entry-level class for the study of the science of mind. It is a personal exploration of the 10 core concepts of science of mind philosophy, faith, and way of life, and their application to the process of daily living. Discover and express the power, creativity, freedom, abundance, and joy that lie within you. Learn about one cosmic reality, how to forgive the past, live in the present, and consciously design your future. You will complete this class with increased poise, confidence, and power in every area of your life. The Foundations class is required for anyone wishing to serve as a team and or home group leader in our youth program or in our leadership council. The class runs 10 consecutive Tuesday evenings beginning Tuesday, September 22nd from 6.45 to 9.30. It also includes one prayer workshop held each Friday evening, no, held one Friday evening, um, which will be October 16th from 7.30 to 9.30, 
and the next Saturday afternoon, October 17th, from 1 to 4. The class is facilitated by Reverend Dusty, and the cost is $245. The second is our Prosperity Plus class, was well, Pr Prosperity Plus 2 class. Prosperity Plus is a dynamic 10-week program taught virtually by Mary Morrissey that teaches a new way of living centered on the spiritual practices of an abundant life. You will learn ways to move from fear, scarcity, and limited thinking to a life full of possibility, prosperity, and promise. This online program, facilitated by Reverend Tom Pittman and Hab Hab Heather Abbott, who is one of our other uh, licensed practitioners, is full of highly transformational curriculum designed to take your life to even greater heights. During this 10-week workshop, participants will be asked to use their life as a laboratory by giving 10% of their time, talent, and treasure to expand and empower their prosperity consciousness. The class is held on 10 consecutive Thursday evenings from 7 to 9. The class fee is $70. Okay, and that's it. So I am going to invite up to the podium our platform host, the beautiful and vivacious Michelle Love. Wow, I should do this more often. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. We're so happy to have you here as part of our community outreach out there. Um, so we have our theme for 2020 is 2020 Spiritual Vision. Our September theme is Facing the Fear. And Reverend Dusty's talk title today is Skepticism, Doubt, and Faith. Oh, wow. I'm now going to read our community purpose statement. Our purpose is to inspire, educate, and empower individuals to experience themselves as unique and individualized expressions of God, the love intelligence that governs the universe. We are committed to not merely a theoretical understanding of our oneness and unity with God, but to consciously practice this truth in our everyday lives. Through celebration, service, study, and fellowship, we are committed to the transformation of our personal lives into being a powerful and beneficial presence on the planet. With the energy of unconditional love, simply, we are here for God. And so it is. Um, I now invite you to close your outer eyes while we spend a few minutes centering ourselves, fully arriving right where you are, bringing your focus within and releasing all else as you allow the healing sounds of the crystal bowls to wash through you, aligning you with the allness of spirit. you to begin to bring your attention back into your bodies and into your rooms and to stay turned within as I speak a word of invocation upon our service today upon this gorgeous day with my eyes closed I am acutely aware of the presence of spirit within me I feel its unconditional love. I feel its joy. I feel its peace. I hear its wisdom. I experience its grace. I know that I am one with this power and presence. I know that it is that which created me. 
out of itself in a moment of unconditional love. And just as I know that this is my truth, I know that it is absolutely true for each and every person here in the sanctuary this morning, each and every person on Facebook Live or Zoom, each and every sentient being on the planet. We are all unique and individualized expression of the divine connected by this golden thread of God stuff that weaves itself throughout all of life. And it is from that place of unity that I bless our time together, knowing that it flows with grace and ease from beginning to end, knowing that there is something within it for each and every person today, whether through the music or the message or the fellowship afterwards, the love that is present in this room or that we can even get a sense of over the airwaves. This community is a divine idea in the mind of God and our time together is divinely guided. I bless all of the people here, this amazing production team that has gathered this morning to bring this service to each of us. I bless Ava and Heather in the AV booth and Michelle and Carol as they come forward as practitioners to support the service. And I bless Cindy as she brings her gift of music. I know that everything that needs to be said is said and everything that needs to be heard is heard. And that together we form this amazing community that supports each other on this beautiful spiritual path. And so for all of the blessings, those that I'm aware of and those I can't even begin to imagine, I am grateful. We anchor this together simply by saying, and so it is, and so it is, amen. It is now my pleasure to welcome back up to the podium the equally as lovely and equally as vivacious Carol Cross. Thank you. So it is time for one of our favorite rituals, and I will ask my fellow practitioner, Michelle, to support me in doing the blessing of all faiths. So the Triangle Center of Spiritual Living honors the diversity and threads of truth that run through all spiritual paths, as represented by this ceremony. Christianity is the path of Christ's consciousness, love, and forgiveness. Buddhism is the path of compassion and understanding. Judaism is the ethical path of living by sacred law. Baha'i is the path of unity and peace. Islam is the path of submission to the will of God, the highest calling. Confucianism is the path of deliberate tradition. Taoism is the natural way, the path of ultimate reality. Native American practice and shamanic traditions are the path of primal spirituality. Shintoism is the path of tribal ancestry. Hinduism is the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. Science of mind and spirit is the path of the divine principle of love and law. And the heart represents the one heart, the one love that resides at the center of all people and all beings everywhere, with no exceptions. May peace prevail on earth through the followers of all paths. And so it is. All right, so the reading for today is from Joseph Puente. And he writes, I honestly don't think that it's possible to have faith without some element of doubt and skepticism. We often hear the phrase, take a leap of faith. Consider what that means. Choosing to accept something that is intangible, even unprovable for all practical purposes, as true without empirical evidence. 
The leap is what's key. The leap is from a place of doubt and skepticism to a place of acceptance and faith. That doesn't mean that doubt and skepticism are bad or hateful. They are, in fact, a necessary step towards having faith. One cannot take a leap from nothingness. One must leap from a place of uncertainty, because if you have no doubt, if you are not skeptical, then there's no need to take a leap of any kind at all. And so it is. All right, so uh, once again, close your outer eyes for just a moment. As I say another word of blessing on this ceremony, and closing my eyes, I focus of a heart on my heart that's just so overflowing with love that I know it is not my individual heart. I know it is the divine heart that we speak of in this ceremony. And I feel that overflowing and outflowing from my physical body to connect with everyone and everything. And in that love, I know it's not just love. I know it is power. I know it is wisdom. I know it is joy and abundance and beauty and peace, glorious peace. And I say, I know that today, that is the energy that motivates our beloved Reverend Dusty as she comes up here to give the talk. And I know that her words will be infused with that divine essence. I know the same is true of Cindy Johnson as she comes out to pour her heart into her songs that ignites that divine love and power within each of us. So I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be together. I'm so grateful for all the people that make this possible. I'm so grateful for you. Knowing that this service is already perfect as far as mine, as far as universal mind is concerned, I turn it over to them, to it, to us, with our words, and so it is. And so it is that we have Cindy Johnson. So thank you so much, Cindy.
And still I find I'm crying out for answers Guess I'm still craving control And still I find I'm afraid of taking chances As if I could damage my soul But at this moment I remember It comes so clear to me That the minute I surrender I'm as safe as I can be The time goes, cause God knows I don't need to know what the future holds, cause God knows I need never know how pain ends. How my heart mends I can just let go Cause God knows I need never I can just let go Absolutely beautiful song and so uh, appropriate as always, Cindy, for for this day and for this talk. That uh, taking that leap, we don't need to know because God knows that inner wisdom within us. So welcome to the Triangle Center for Spiritual Living, and to those of you who may have just jumped on to. Facebook Live or to Zoom. We're so very grateful that you have chosen to include us in your morning. The theme for the month of September is Facing the Fear. And last week we talked about fear and we also talked about faith. Today we are going to add to that conversation. My talk title is Skepticism, Doubt, and Faith. Oh, wow. Skepticism is the attitude of doubting knowledge, an expression of questioning that can be applied to any topic, such as politics or religion or pseudoscience. It is often applied with restricted domains, such as morality or theism or the supernatural. Skepticism is the theory that certain knowledge is impossible. Skeptics challenge the adequacy or the reliability of knowledge by asking which principles it is based upon or what exactly it establishes. Doubt, on the other hand, is a mental state in which the mind remains suspended between two or more contradictory propositions, unable to be certain of any of them. Doubt on an emotional level is indecision between belief and disbelief. 
It may involve uncertainty or distrust or a lack of conviction about certain facts or actions or motives or decisions. Doubt can result in the delaying or rejecting of relevant action out of concern for mistakes or missed opportunities. Doubt is a feeling of uncertainty or lack of conviction. It can mean to harbor suspicions about or to fear or be afraid. Synonyms can include uncertainty, unsuredness, indecisiveness, hesitation, and mistrust. The bottom line is that all people have doubts from time to time. We will inevitably and perhaps even daily run into situations that raise questions and cause doubts. That is the nature of being finite and of not knowing everything that there is to know. Some people, however, are more inclined towards skepticism. They bring a certain amount of negativity or even pessimism to the questions and therefore to the answers. They do not trust that the answers will be there or that they will want to hear what they are or that they will not be the right answers. Both doubt and skepticism can be experienced as something that we might call positive or they can be experienced as something that we might call negative. Doubt, on one hand, can be positive because it raises questions, and questions al allow us to continue to keep growing. Doubt can be something that we explore. It can lead us deeper into the truth. On the other hand, doubt can devolve into skepticism. The invitation is to think about the times of doubt that we've had in our own lives. Have we blended that doubt with curiosity and found the deeper truths, or have we devolved into skepticism, which has kept us stuck and not allowed us to move forward in our lives? There are times, most definitely, when skepticism is beneficial. However, if we are living our lives from a lens or from a context of skepticism, skepticism, it would really behoove us to ask ourselves if that is working for us or not. Is it adding to the experience of our life in a way that is positive or, and uplifting, or is it tending to be bringing us down? Ignoring doubt and skepticism will not strengthen our faith. It will merely supplant it with blind acceptance. And blind acceptance is absolutely not the same as faith. Ernest Holmes did not want blind followers. He wanted each of us to try the principles in our own lives and to prove them or to demonstrate them for ourselves. We were not created to be blind followers. We were given free will and the capacity to think. If we were given this free will and the capacity to think, then wouldn't we suppose that we were meant to be using them? In Alma 32, verse 27, from the Book of Mormon, it says, But behold, if ye will awake and arouse your faculties even to an experiment upon my words, and exercise a particle of faith, yea, even if ye can no more than desire to believe, let this desire work in you, even until ye believe in a matter that ye can give place for a portion of my words. Now, I love this verse because it challenges us to not just accept what we're being taught, but to put it to a test, to be empirical in the application of the principles, to experience their truth and to observe the effect that they have upon our own lives. I love that the verse doesn't require us to be fully believing from the beginning, only to exercise a particle of faith. We don't have to take that leap, only to exercise a particle of faith, something that even the most hardened skeptic should be able to muster, even if the best that they can do is to have the desire to, be to believe. 
we all need to, to start exactly where we are. And if that is in the middle, sitting in the middle of doubt and skepticism, then we need to start there. I would say to be willing to be willing. To be willing to be willing to be willing. And what I believe about being willing to be willing is that it vibrates at a much higher level than doubt and skepticism at their base and draws unto us that which we are willing to accept, creating more and more faith with each and every single demonstration. As I, as I sat with this talk title, Skepticism, Doubt, and Faith, Oh Wow, my mind very quickly went to lions and tigers and bears, oh my. The line is spoken in the 1939 film, uh, The Wizard of Oz. In the film, while walking through the dark forest, Dorothy, the Tin Man, and the Scarecrow get scared when they start to hear noises coming from the foliage that is all around them. The Scarecrow wonders if there are any animals that that are out there that might be interested in eating things like mm, straw, for example. And the Tin Man's reply was like, yeah, there's probably lions and tigers and bears out there. Now, of course, knowing the scarecrow as we, as we do, this naturally causes him to anxiously repeat, lions and tigers and bears, and Dorothy throws in, oh my, for some dramatic, for some dramatic effect. Now, it seems fairly obvious to me that in a month called Facing Our Fears with a talk title called Skepticism, Doubt, and Faith, Oh Wow, that we might want to examine the Wizard of Oz. We might want to take a look at the wisdom that is contained within it for our own spiritual journey. The Wizard of Oz is a story of the hero's journey. It is the story of a spiritual seeker on the journey of a self-discovery. It begins in Kansas, which represents the material world, the physical plane where each of us begins our spiritual journey. It is our starting point. Within the story, there is a heroic little girl, Dorothy, who is called upon to make life work. And like the hero in all other hero journeys, journey tales, she is stopped at every turn. Nothing is working in her life or has any positive energy except her little dog, Toto. And Toto, yes, even Toto, is being threatened with death. Through the vehicle of a tornado, Dorothy crosses the threshold of time and space and steps into the realm of amplified power just as every hero in these types of stories does. There she meets aliases as well as shadow creatures that evoke fear and doubt. She undergoes trials and tribulations and transformations until ultimately gaining the pearl of self-knowledge, which she then brings home in order to transform her regular life. Jean Houston says, like all great stories, The Wizard of Oz provides a template that allows us to open ourselves to the hidden capacities we had forgotten that we had, the creative potentials that we didn't know how to use, and the deeper knowing that transcends past, present, and future, a deeper knowing within each and every one of us. We are so much more than we thought we were. So in the beginning of the story, Dorothy is embroiled in a struggle with Miss Gulch over Toto's behavior each and every single time that Dorothy and Toto happen to walk past her house. Every day, he chases her cat, and he tramples down her flowers. And instead of choosing to take a different route home or to train Toto to behave, Dorothy defiantly continues to choose to blame Miss Gulch for all of the trouble and to remain entrenched in some very unpleasant circumstances. Now, fed up with Dorothy, Dorothy's continued disrespect for her property, 
Miss Gulch obtains a court order to take Toto away from Dorothy. Refusing to listen to anyone's advice about the situation, Dorothy scoops up Toto and decides to run away. Now, if we really think about it, we can all probably think about times in our lives when we have run away from our problems or turned to alcohol or drugs or food or work or working out or relationships or sex to run from our lives. We've chosen to stay stuck in our belief in our victimization and our blame game rather than looking within. On her journey to nowhere, Dorothy meets Professor Marvel, a traveling magician. He pretends to read her future while gazing into a crystal ball. Preying on her worldly ignorance, he appeals to her emotion and to the guilt that she feels about leaving to influence and manipulate her decisions. He tells her that Auntie M is ill and that she needs to return home, and the ruse works. Again, if we really think about this, we can think about some particular family members or friends or neighbors or teachers or even strangers in our lives who have had or continue to have control over us, control over our emotions through our guilt and our ignorance. As this is happening, we give away our power. As this is happening, we lose our sense of our identity. As this is happening, we live a life that is not entirely our own. The journey back to the farmhouse was a frightening one for Dorothy. A storm was approaching and nothing felt stable or safe. The winds were becoming stronger and stronger until she was facing a full-blown tornado. Now, the tornado represents those moments when life feels dark and out of control. Haven't we all felt times when we have felt confused or overwhelmed by the outer circumstances of our lives? When we've been consumed by fear of the things that have been going on around us. Perhaps now is one of those times. When she arrived at the farm, she tried to open the cellar door and desperately pulls on it again and again and again. However, it would not open, representing all of the times that we have struggled with or fought something until sheer exhaustion and yet still appeared to fail at it. Frightened and confused, Dorothy runs inside the house and into her bedroom where she watches all kinds of things fly past the open window. Ultimately, the window shutters are ripped from the wall and strike her on her head, rendering her unconscious. Symbolically, in this unconscious state of mind, Dorothy has lost her way home. She has separated from the family she loved, and she has entered into a dream state as the house spins violently within the eye of the tornado. When her house finally lands, it landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, killing her and ending her wicked control over Munchkinland. While the guilt that she felt about killing her drastically discounts the success that she possibly could have felt at ending the evil in the land, she was nonetheless given a pair of red ruby slippers by Galinda, the good witch of the north. Metaphysically, the slippers represented her intuitive guidance, her protection, and her power over all things, over all circumstances, over all obstacles. Galinda explained to Dorothy the value of the sli slippers, stating that she must never take them off. This message is just as much for us, inviting us to call upon this power and presence that is always within us and always available to us every step of our journey. journey. Only God knows. 
Galinda then sends Dorothy off to the Emerald City to find the Wizard of Oz who would have the, dis the directions for her way back home. Dorothy asks, how do I start? And Galinda replies, it is always best to start at the beginning. The beginning is always, I mean always, right where we are. But we have to take that first step. We have to take action. However big our fears or however small our faith, we have to take action. The yellow brick road represents not only the journey itself, but the guidance of our inner spirit, our divine inner voice, our intuition. It is always ready and available to guide us as we walk on, uh, on th along this journey of life. That is why Galinda also tells Dorothy not to stray too far from the yellow brick road. Toto, remember her little dog, is a Latin word which means everything. It is synonymous with being whole and complete. Toto is always with Dor Dorothy, always communicating with her, always assisting her to know the truth by barking and war warning her of the things that she initially cannot see. The deeper spiritual significance is that we cannot always be aware of everything even when it is right in front of us. Our human perceptions might perceive that something is true, however, it is only our inner intuitive self that is capable of truly seeing. Our eyes can be deceived, however, our intuition always knows the truth. We simply have to be open and receptive to this inner wisdom. Only God knows. Along the way, we meet up with all kinds of characters and obstacles. Each one has something to add to our journey. Along the way, we learn many lessons. We create many new relationships, and we conquer many different challenges. Often gifts, talents, and Talents and strengths are revealed that we didn't even know we had. And opportunities present themselves to use the ones that we have doubted or were skeptical about. We also might find out, discover weaknesses that we may have within us. We will, however, as Dorothy did, find out that we have the wisdom within us to be able to embrace those, those um, weaknesses and to ultimately know our wholeness. The funny thing about the characters th that we meet along the way is that often those characters that we might describe as negative end up being the ones that assist our spiritual growth in the most dramatic way possible. They often end up being our best teachers the tornadoes, the, the wicked witches, the wind, the poppy flowers, the Marvin, Marvel, the magician, or the Miss Gulches of our lives all play an important role in our spiritual journey. The tornadoes, for example, while representing chaos, also represent the uh, unpleasant events in our lives that move us to higher places, places that we probably never would have been able to attain without that chaos, without those tornadoes. While Dorothy um, initially kills the Wicked Witch of the East, she meets other witches along the way. The Wicked Witches represent the shadow side of life, while the Good Witches represent the light. We all have both aspects both the shadow side and the light side within us. The Wicked Witch of the West threatens to take Toto back, to take Toto away, not only in the unconscious dream state, but also as Ms. Gulch back home in Kansas. They represent all of the ways that we can self-sabotage ourselves. Glinda the Good Witch represents the divine spark within that balances, supports, and guides our spirit on the quest. Symbolic of 
light, and goodness. She guides Dorothy at the beginning and then again at the end of her journey, leaving that middle part, leaving Dorothy to transverse the yellow brick road alone on this journey of self-discovery. Just as it was for Dorothy, there are things that we have to do for ourselves. No one else can do them for us. Dorothy also meets a few allies along the way, the munchkins, the scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion. The, munchkin, the munchkins represent the innocence that we arrived on the planet with. Their small childlike appearance and playful mannerisms are a metaphor for the attitude that we should take with us along this journey, that we should walk that yellow brick road with open and available to all that the journey has to offer without resistance. They represent the spiritual ideal. The scarecrow represents Dorothy's need to grow intellectually. If we are to powerfully step into our highest and best, we need to continue learning and to continue growing. The Tin Man represents Dorothy's need to awaken her sense of love and compassion. The cowardly lion represents the bully that always shows up on every journey. He is a, a mirror of her fear, of her apparent lack of courage, and her low self-esteem. Each of this, these characters desires something from Oz to make them feel better about themselves. The scarecrow wants a brain, the tin man a heart, and the lion courage. They are all looking outside of themselves for what it is that they think they want. However, as they find out in this story, the bottom line is that everything that they should ever want or need, they already have within them. It already exists within them. They don't have to look outside of themselves for any of it. When they actually get to the em Emerald City and they encountered the wizard, he puts Dorothy to a test. She has to bring back the broom of the Wicked Witch of the West. It is interesting here that there is a paradox. On the hero's journey, we will always be given a test before grace is invoked. And we need grace to pass the test. For example... We cannot instantly become courageous. We need to act courageously in order to know that we have courage. While on the quest to get to the broom, Dorothy is captured. When she calls out to the scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion, she is basically calling on her own inner in, uh, intellect, heart, and courage to assist her. As they are trying to assist her, the wicked witch sets fire to the scarecrow. Dorothy throws water on him in an act of courage, splashing the wicked witch in the process, which causes her to melt the grace. Dorothy's fears are melted as well, and she finally feels safe. Water represents our unconscious mind. This represents the fact that we can always call upon our unconscious mind to dissolve our fears because in reality, they live in our mind. As the beliefs that we told ourselves about ourselves based on events that happened in the past or based on stories that we are telling ourselves about the future, stories that we are literally making up. Now, there's so much more that we could talk about. However, the bottom line is that we all have the power within us, and yet we must learn it for ourselves. The truth is not so much given as it is realized. The invitation is to face our fears and take the first steps down the yellow brick road on our hero's journey, our spiritual journey back home. 
The invitation is to be willing to be willing to move through our doubt and skepticism and to have the faith that it is a journey that we can and need to make in order to step into our highest and best. The invitation is to be willing to be willing to move through our doubt and skepticism and to know that we will be guided along the way by our own inner intuition and assisted by allies and those right and perfect characters that mirror what is within us that needs to be embraced and healed if we are to become whole. The invitation is to be willing to be willing to move through our doubt and skepticism and to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the truth is found in our own backyard and that there is no place like home. The invitation is to be willing to be willing to move through our doubt and skepticism and to know that we have the wisdom, the heart, and the courage within us to transform not only our own lives but in doing so, create the space and place for everyone else on the planet to also do so, thereby creating a world that works for everyone. And so it is. And so it is. So I invite us all to turn within, to allow us to turn our attention to that center that divine light, that core of our being, our Christ consciousness, to know that it truly is who we are, that we are spiritual beings having a human incarnation, and as such, we arrived on the planet with everything that we need. We arrived on the planet as a divine, individualized expression of the divine. That we arrived on the planet as a hologram of it. That right where we are is that presence of spirit. In its fullness and in its wholeness, it could be no other way. We are not just humans. We are divine. We are divinity. Each of us connected by that golden thread of God stuff. Connected to God, connected to each other, and connected to what life in ways that can never be separate. And it's from that place of unity that I speak these words about and for each of us today. Truly knowing that there is a way that we can live our lives and honor our doubt and even our skepticism and to be able to move through it. To find a particle of faith that we can use bit by bit by bit to demonstrate that faith in our lives to demonstrate the way that it works, to demonstrate how that power is always present and always available and always ready, willing, and able to give us the kingdom of heaven on earth. I claim ease and grace for each and every single one of us as we walk that yellow brick road, as we make our way back home as we undertake this spiritual journey, this hero's journey, recognizing the strengths and the talent and the gifts that we have within us and utilizing them to create a better world, a magnificent world for each and every single one of us. And I'm so grateful to know this truth and to speak these words so grateful for the power of prayer, knowing that these words are loosed into a law that only ever says yes. That my words are clothed in form even as they are spoken. And so I speak them and I release them with love and gratitude and full expectation of their manifestation. Letting go and letting God be God. And I invite each of us to anchor these words for ourselves, for each other, and for the entire planet simply by saying, 
and so it is. Amen. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, everyone. It is now time for our conscious giving. The Triangle Center for Spiritual Living is sustained by the giving of our time, talent, and treasure. And this is the time every week that we offer financial support to make sure that we can continue to be a beacon of light for ourselves and others. I invite those of you at home to please join us as we prepare for this moment of gifting. Let us bless this thing called money, God in action. We send forth these gifts with an intention for our money to make a difference. We send forth this offering fueled with our desire to do our part in funding a world that works for everyone. We affirm the truth together that today's offering lifts this spiritual community, prospers the one giving, and contributes to the experience of sufficiency on the planet. Please repeat after me. I am grateful for all that I receive, and I am grateful for all that I may give. And so it is. Please join me in welcoming back to her piano the awesome Cindy Johnson. <laughs> I can fly, I believe I can touch the 
sky Think about it every night and day Spread my wings and fly away I believe I can soar See me running through an open door I believe I can fly 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 You. That was fantastic. We are so blessed to have a songstress whose outfits are as sparkling and as lifting as her music is. So, And I also have to thank Reverend Dusty for such a wise and profound talk. She knows I love me some hero's journey, so <laughs> I have a personal uh, appreciation, particularly for this uh, service. Okay, so if anybody would like prayer... We are here for you. All of us are here for you. We've got lots of practitioners who want to be supporting you in your own hero's journey. So if you would like some prayer, then you can go to our website at trianglecsl.org, and on the home page, there is a button in the upper right-hand corner. You just click on that button and fill in the request. We'll get that prayer and send it to all of our ministers and practitioners. And if you don't remember all that, you can just email Dusty or any of us, or whatever. there's a list on the website of practitioners. Just call us. All right. Now, in the comfort of your own home, please stand up for our September affirmation. We want to use that breath that we talked about uh, in the meditation and really belt these out so that they're powerful and uh, create the atmosphere for our manifestations. So this is a call and response, so please repeat after me. I live in the faith that there is power and presence greater than I am. I live in the faith there is a power and presence greater than I am. I know that it nurtures and supports me in ways I could not even imagine. I know it nurtures and supports me in ways that I could not even imagine. I affirm that it does so from a place deep within my heart. I affirm that it does so from a place deep within my heart. I have faith that it informs me of my highest and best. I have faith that it informs me of my highest and best. I see beyond the world of appearances through its wisdom. I see beyond the world of appearances through its wisdom. From my place in faith, I act in ways that affirm the inherent goodness of all. From my place of faith, I act in ways that affirm the inherent goodness of all. I surrender into the grace of the one, knowing I am divinely guided in all that I do. I surrender into the grace of the one, knowing I am divinely guided in all that I do. I take that first step, even when I cannot see the entire staircase and all is well. I take that first step, even when I can't see the entire staircase, and all is well. And so it is. Okay, so um, of course everybody wants to stay to see our closing video, but um, for just one more moment, please close your outer eyes. Turn away from that world of appearance, that world of chaos and fears and tornadoes and witches and looking inside ooh, I find my divine hero and that hero is powerful and that hero is joyful and peaceful and abundant and wise and is moving forward and I see that yellow brick road that combines us all. Just another metaphor for that golden thread of God stuff that connects us all, that reminds us all that we are one. 
Some of us may look like scarecrows, and some of us may look like um, farm girls. But it's all good because it's all God. And I affirm that we have grounded ourselves in this more strongly today. Thank you to everybody that has been part of this service. I'm so grateful for our community. I'm so grateful for the talents of the people who serve. I'm so grateful for the power of prayer and the power of meditation and the power of music and divine words. So from this place, I know that today and this week will go forth in a higher place, knowing that the journey we're on is a heroic one and pushing through any fears, any doubts, because we know in the bottom of it all, we are God. I know this is the truth. I know it is not my job to make it the truth, but my job is to turn it over to God who will make it so. So I invite everyone to anchor this for themselves and for others with our words, and so it is.